Hi, and welcome to Fire Mountain Live. I'm Patty. I'm a jewelry designer here at Fire Mountain Gems and Beads. And today, I, on this live video segment, I'm going to be showing you how to make some really cool, trendy tassel earrings. Let me go ahead and show you the designs that we're doing today. Uh, first, we're going to be doing this really great hoop tassel. I, I've been seeing these everywhere. They're so much fun and they're so easy to do. You can learn to make these in like 10 minutes, either one of these designs. You don't need a lot of skill and you don't need a lot of tools. So um, I really hope you enjoy that project. And the next one we're going to be doing is this really beautiful, elegant ribbon tassel and um, ribbon tassel earring. <laughs> Um, this one I just absolutely love for the elegance, the simple black lines with the um, gold-plated findings is really pretty. It's a kind of a more dressed up look, okay? So, um, hi Marla from Delaware. Thank you everybody for joining us here today. We really appreciate having you here. Um, she says, I can do this with you. I have supplies from leftover projects. Oh, that's awesome. We have someone actually working along with me. I love that. In fact, you know, anyone viewing, we advertise these ahead of time and you can get the supplies if you have them at home or, or even order them sometimes and work along with me. It'd be really a lot of fun. Um, so I'm going to talk about the supplies that we need to make these hoop tassel earrings first. So I'm going to put this crimp end tassel out of the way for now. And we're going to focus on this one. We're going to start with that one. So the materials that will be in this earring are some different mini tassels. And you can purchase these here at Fire Mountain. All of these supplies are something that you can get with us. Um, and some, these, some of these great gold plated hoop elements and some ear wires. The hoop elements, I just want to show you. These are special. Um, they're not just a hoop, they're an open hoop. And that means that one side of the hoop actually comes open. So if you can look here, I don't know if, how close that you can see that, but one side, one back is crimped here and one is not. So the one that's not opens up so you can thread elements onto your hoops. You can thread beads on there, or in this case, you can thread on tassels. I'm gonna go ahead and set that aside. Hi, Kim from Hevel. So glad that you're here with us. Please take a moment, everybody, to comment. If you have any questions about any of the materials or the processes, um, please just throw them in the comments. I'd be happy to answer those live. Um, if you have any questions about what we're doing, throw those in there. Um, and if it's something I can't answer right this second, we have a team standing by that'll answer that for you, okay? Let's see, so I've got my hoop out. I'm gonna grab one of the ear wires and then one of each color of the tassels. To work with, okay? And just kind of set that aside. These are really simple to make and they're so much fun. Um, Please take the moment to hit that thumbs up on the video, like the video. The more people that um, interact with our video through likes, comments, shares, that kind of thing, um, the more it gets out, the more those algorithms for our social media outlets um, kind of bump up the popularity and then more people get to do this project and, and see how to um, make these gorgeous earrings. Okay. So I've opened up my hoop already, and I'm just going to start threading on these tassels, but first I have to cut off the jump rings that bind them. You notice there's a little steel jump ring here at the top. Um, the hoop is going to go right through the channel where the jump ring is right now. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this off. So we'll pre-prepare these by cutting all of the jump rings off first. I think that's a good first step. I'm going to use kind of a heavy duty flesh cutter for this since these are stainless steel. Um, you could probably use your standard flesh cutters, but you do run the risk of maybe um, marring, marring the cutting surface and, uh, surface, and I don't want to do that. 
So I'm going to use a heavier cutter for this one. And I'm just going to where, um, you know, kind of away from the uh, juncture here where the um, jump ring closes, I'm going to cut that. So I don't want to cut it too close to that if you can see it. And I'm going to put my finger over the tail that's going to come off to make sure that doesn't flap into my eyes. Okay. And then I'm just going to take a plier and pull that jump ring out and then set it aside. Okay, great. And then I'll just do the next one. We'll keep going that way. Wendy from San Diego, thanks for joining us. Wendy asks, are you going to show how to make the tassels by hand? You know what? Um, not for these mini tassel earrings. I really wanted to show these particular tassels because they're pre-manufactured and it's so easy to um, put this particular earring together with the pre-manufactured mini tassels. However, when we do the crimp end tassel earring, I am going to show you how to make these tassels by hand. Uh, we also do sell this amazing little tool called a tassel maker. Um, that I use a lot when I'm making tassels and it's not going to be in this video But we do have a video about that and lots of projects in our gallery that use that tassel maker where you can um, Use a tool to create them. This is just a little bit different this time I wanted to show you some kind of new and fresh different way to do it Okay So I'm just going to continue on cutting these jump rings out I actually tried to thread them on there with the jump rings on just to see if I could because um, I thought it might be kind of a neat look to leave them on and it didn't work out very well. So I really am suggesting to go ahead and remove them ahead of time. Okay, and do it real gently. You want to make sure not to um, disturb the end of the tassel that's bound because you're going to want to put the hoop right back through there. Hi, Rochelle. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Manju from Florida. People from all over the place joining us. I love that. Kelly asks, can you thread it on before you remove the jump ring? Huh, I just talked about that. Sorry, I didn't see your question first. Great minds think alike. Yes, I did try that and no, it didn't work out very well. There's just not enough space. These mini tassels are bound pretty tight. So the channel in there um, for something to go through is fairly small. You could try it though, you can always try it. Let your creativity work for you. Okay, so we're gonna go into the next one, cut that jump ring. And remember, I'm always just making sure that those little pieces don't fly up into my eyes. Whenever you're cutting metal or working with pieces of metal that could fly, be really, really careful. Your eyes are precious. We can't replace those. Okay. For anyone just joining us that might have missed part of the beginning of the video, please know that the video is being recorded. So if you miss anything, you're welcome to, at the end of the video, go back and you can watch the whole thing on the recording. Okay. There we go. One more. Hi, Kathy Blossom from Texas. Thanks for joining us. Almost done here. This is such a great project. It's quick, easy. Um, you could even do this with your teenager if you wanted to, or your tween. It'd be a fun project to do together. Okay, so I've got all my tassels, the jump rings removed. Now I'm just going to go ahead and start threading those tassels onto the hoop. Hi, Deborah from Sacramento. California girl like me. I'm originally from California too. Now I live in the beautiful state of Oregon. I love it here. If you have a chance to visit, visit. It's great here. What are you guys going to do this weekend? Is anyone getting ready for Halloween? What are we doing for Halloween during COVID? I'm really curious. Um, throw, throw your plans in the comments. I'd I like to know what's going on. I'm still trying to figure out what I'm doing. 
So I'm going to start with the dark blue tassel in the earring. And you could use any color tassels too. We have some beautiful rainbow tassels. We have gold, silver, you know, whatever kind of look that you want. I would even be tempted to make multiple pairs of these in different colors so they go with different outfits. Sometimes when I find something I really love, I just want it in every color. Okay, so sometimes I'm gonna put the tassel in my non-dominant hand so I have a little more um, control over the hoop. So you want to just really gently find that channel and go through all of the loops. It might take just a minute to do that. And really important is the end loops here coming out. You want to make sure and go through those. And we got that. Okay. And then next is the lighter blue. We'll go ahead and grab that. Hi, Trisha. Also from Sacramento. All these lovely California girls. Hi, Becky Justice. Hi, Shannon from Tennessee. We have a beautiful crowd with us tonight. Okay, so we're working on this lighter blue tassel and I'm just gently working the edge of this hoop. The edge of the hoop is not exactly straight, so you can straighten it out if you want. Um, and we'll show you at the end why it's not straight. But it's just a slight bend, so I feel like I can work it through that tassel pretty well. I'm just going to take my time in doing it to make sure I'm not disturbing that bound tassel too much. And see how I'm getting my fingers up here closer to the end? That gives me a little more control. And sometimes I found in doing this, if I flip the tassel around, I have more luck in getting it in there easier. It's just kind of maneuvering it and playing with it until you get the result you want. Okay, we're getting there. Some of them are just bound a little bit tighter, so they take just a little bit more patience, and that's okay. We're not in any big hurry. Got it about halfway there. Okay, and as I'm coming to the end here, I'm just looking to see that the end is going through all of the loops. Don't want to miss any. Great, we got it. Okay, so we've got two on. The next one is the lavender. I'll grab that. Hi, Sarah Renee. Oh, I'm so glad that you're enjoying the videos. This is so much fun for me to get to do. Um, I used to live in Oklahoma, and I worked for a fine arts museum there, uh, the Maybe Guerra Museum of Art, and I taught um, jewelry classes through them, and I absolutely loved teaching, and it's something that I really miss, so getting to do these Facebook Lives here for Fire Mountain is so much fun for me. Really, really enjoying that. Okay, so we've got the lavender. Let's go for the purple one here, and you'll notice that they're a little bit different lengths. No stress on that. We're going to trim them at the end if, if there's something that's feeling off. Okay, so I'm going through the end of the purple. And notice how I'm just twisting it a bit. See, I came out the top here. I want to bring it back and go through all the loops. Okay, so on this purple one, this is a good teaching moment. There's one loop here that it seems like I didn't go through. Yep, there's a rogue loop here. You won't be able to see it very well on the camera. But if at the end when you come out there's a loop or two that you didn't go through, don't worry. It's really easy to just grab some pliers with a fine tip, grab that loop, and just pull it right out of there, and you've got a nice clean um, tassel on there. And it's really not going to make any difference. Okay, then we'll go for the pink. I'm going to trade hands. I really like to hold the t tassel in my non-dominant hand. That way I'm, my left hand is like basically useless, right? <laughs> it's just for holding things. My right hand does all the work. Hi, Liz. Oh, you're having a hurricane party today in NOLA? Oh my gosh. Well, I am going to be wishing you guys the best. I, I hope that you're all safe and sound out there. 
Um, Mary Kate is bagging candy and sending it down to a Jonas slide her husband made for Halloween. I really like that. You guys are inventive and lovely, and I love that you're still participating in Halloween, finding a creative way to get through COVID. I love it. Okay, so we're putting the pink tassel on. That's so much fun. I saw that on Facebook, and I really <laughs> was tempted to do it, but I was afraid there wouldn't be enough trick-or-treaters to really enjoy it. Okay, we've got the pink one on, and then the last one will be the coral. So we'll be going through that. Okay, right through the end of the coral tassel. Looks like this one's coming along fairly easy. Oh, and I missed a loop on that one too. Instead of trying to rethread it, since it's only one loop, you know, if you miss a whole bunch of loops, like five or six, I would pull, probably pull it off and rethread it. But if it's just one, I think that it's safe to just pull it out. There was like two. Oh, one more. Peeking out there. There we go. So now you've got all of your tassels threaded on. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is close up the hoop. And there's a couple of things that you can do with this. Generally, with this kind of hoop, I will thread the end of the hoop through this crimp end in the back of this element, the hoop element. And it goes through the crimp end and into the middle of this kind of um, hoop binding element up here where the holes are. And then there's a little piece of tail there that is kind of curved up and that's why your hoop um, wire is not completely straight on these. It's got like a little curve and that's to try and keep it from just coming apart if you don't want it to come apart. Um, you can then crimp the crimp here and that's something I'm going to do. But then also for a little insurance, I'm going to take some tiny nose. I'm just going to use rounds um, for this because the nose is so tiny. But if you have some needle nose or some really fine um, chain nose, you can use that too. But I'm just going to um, crimp it first with my flat nose pliers, just like this. And um, don't be afraid to put lots of pressure on that. The more pressure that you put on that, the better your hold is going to be. So I'm really putting pressure on it. And then I'm going to take my round nose with these little tiny ends here. And this little piece of wire that's coming out of the crimp in the middle of my hoop element here, I'm just going to give it a little extra twist upward just for insurance that that hoop doesn't come apart. Okay, so um, the other thing you can do, I just want to throw it out there. I don't have it with me because I didn't really do it on this earrings, but if you're not feeling a really nice tight crimp, if you feel like it might come apart, you can use some um, epoxy and put just a drop of epoxy here on where the wire comes out of the crimp. And um, that's a great way to really keep a good hold on it. Um, my favorite epoxy to use to do that is called DevCon 5-Minute Epoxy. And the reason that I love it is that not only does it have really good hold on metal findings like this, but um, it dries in five minutes and I can keep going with my day. I don't have a whole lot of patience for drying glue <laughs> sometimes. So um, that's my suggestion for that if you feel like it's not, you're not getting a good hold. Okay, so the last little piece of the tassel part is evening them out. You'll see that most of the tassels are about the same length. They don't have to be like to the millimeter the same length. But this um, lavender one is quite a bit longer than the other ones. So I'm going to take a pair of sharp scissors. Um, don't try and do it with dull scissors. You'll just get really frustrated. So use something sharp. You could also put this down on um, a flat surface like um, a cutting mat and use a craft knife to do this. But the scissors are a little bit easier since I happen to have sharp scissors on hand. And I'm just going to figure out, it's like three millimeters that I need to cut off the end of this. So I'm going to pull those other tassels aside. 
And I could have cut it beforehand if I really wanted to, but I like to kind of see how they look together to see if it really needs it. Um, but I'm going to pull the other tassels aside and just have this lavender one in my hand. And I'm going to kind of clamp that so it's not fanned out too much, so it's kind of straight. Uh, if it's really found out, you have a big curve and it's kind of harder to cut on the curve. So if it's a little bit closer together, it's a little bit easier to cut it evenly. And I'm just going to cut off about three millimeters of this tassel. I'm going to kind of look at the ends and make sure they didn't fan out too much. Just trim up. You can just eyeball it. And then I had one strand that wasn't in there. I'm going to cut that off. Okay. So let's look at our tassel element now. That looks really good. Really good. Just, just right. Hello to Kathy. You're moving while you're sick. Oh my gosh. That's moving is probably my least favorite activity. I love finding new places to put my stuff in a new place. I like the adventure, but the whole packing and moving your stuff is not fun. And while you're sick is no fun. So I wish you well. I hope you get better soon. Um, Debbie from Maryland says, hi. Hi, Debbie. So nice to have you here. And Marilyn is asking a question. She's asking, would it help to thread the hoop on if you put a fine wire through it first so the hoop could slide along it? You could certainly try that. That's not something that occurred to me, but you know, jewelry design is, is an art, and art is all about individual creativity. It's about individual expression and different people finding different ways to do things. So I don't necessarily know that there's always a right or wrong. There are so many possibilities. So go ahead and try that. You could try putting a wire through there first and see if you have like a guide to, to slip it through. In fact, if you do that and it works or if it doesn't work, I would love to know. Come back and let us know. Um, Mary Kate is asking, um, she doesn't order online. Do you have mail-in catalogs? And if so, how can you get one? Mary Kate, absolutely. We send catalogs out all throughout the year. So we would love to get you a subscription to our catalogs. Um, go ahead and give us a call or you can email us and someone on our team out there, our social media team is going to put that phone number and that link up for you and we will get you subscribed and you will have those catalogs coming to your house. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish this up. The last thing we need to do for this earring is just attach the ear wire. So I'm going to take this and a little trick if you haven't watched my videos before. Um, I really um, feel it's important when you open an ear wire and it's the same row jump ring to the side. So you don't want to open it up and kind of elongate the loop. You just want to open it sideways a bit enough to accommodate whatever's going on there. And then you want to make sure that the ear wire is in the right orientation so the back of the piece is toward the back. And then you close it the same way, sideways. So I'm just going to clamp the end of that loop and close it. And then to, to get a nice tight close, I just rock it back and forth a little bit so the tail of the loop is hitting kind of the shank of the ear wire. And you have a nice tight connection and you don't lose anything that way. And there we have our beautiful tassel earrings. I love these. Okay. So we've got that project down. Now let's look at our ribbon crimp end tassel. I absolutely love these. Um, crimp ends are a really interesting way to make your own tassels when you want to um, Simple way to do it, if you don't happen to have the tassel maker tool, you can do it using a plastic card like a credit card. And that's what I've done here. I'm going to go ahead and show you that technique. Um, okay, so I'm going to set that aside for just now. Let's look at the elements that are in this particular earring. I'm going to pull those into frame. So we've got some double F thread. And that double F is just the thickness of the thread. And it's in black. 
it's a silk thread. And then we've got these great little ribbon crimp ends, some modified open hoops, some jump rings and some ear wires. That's all there is to it with this project. So again, you can learn this in like 10 minutes. It's really actually fast to learn the technique to make the tassel. Uh, hi, Deborah. She says that she can envision a crystal drop between the tassels to fill in that space. Oh my gosh, that would be so pretty. Please make that and show me. <laughs> I love to see the creativity people come up with. Um, for the last pair, she's talking about for these, and that could be really interesting to have some kind of a bead or drop between the tassels. I love that. I love that. I might, might take that idea. <laughs> you might end up seeing that somewhere. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on the crimp end tassel earring. I'm going to set that aside for reference. So, um, you know, and again, make sure and hit that thumbs up in the video if you're enjoying it. That really helps us out. And every time that you interact with us on social media, it helps get the videos out more. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that um, we have a whole playlist of earrings. There's it, all kinds of earrings in our tutorial gallery. Um, and, and other jewelry projects and techniques. So make sure and go to our website and check out our tutorial gallery. So much there to learn, so many fun things. Hi, Sherry from Indiana. Thank you for being with us here today. Okay, so to get started on this earring, I'm gonna grab the black silk thread and a plastic card like this. Um, then I'm gonna grab one of my ribbon crimp ends and we're gonna mark with the crimp end on the plastic card how far apart, the, how, how wide the tassel needs to be because we're actually gonna wrap the tassel around the card to create the tassel, okay? So this is the width of my tassel. And so if you're using your own like credit card or some kind of plastic card out of your wallet and you don't wanna use Sharpie, which is how I'm gonna mark it, um, you can grab some painter's tape and just mark the outside of um, this ribbon crimp end with some painter's tape so you'll, you'll have a guide to how wide you want your tassel to be. But for this purpose, because I'm not truly worried about this card, I'm just going to mark it. So I put my crimp end on the end of the card and I just want to note, if you're not a long earring person, which I love long earrings, if you really like a shorter earring, change the orientation of the card and put it on the other direction and you can make a shorter tassel just the same. But for this, for this purpose, we're going to make a longer one. So I am going to go ahead and put my ribbon crimp on, end on there and at the ends of the crimp end, I'm just going to make a mark with the Sharpie. And that just shows me how wide that crimp end is. Then I'm gonna grab, grab a piece of scotch tape. You can also use the painter's tape. Um, I thought originally that the scotch tape was kind of kind of gum up the thread, but it didn't. I didn't have any problem with it, so that worked really well. But if you are concerned about like sticky residue, try the painter's tape because that doesn't leave that. Um, for, this, for this, I'm gonna use the scotch tape because it was pretty easy to do. And I like easy. So I'm just gonna take my thread and I'm gonna line it up inside of those marks by a couple of millimeters. I don't wanna go all the way out to the marks because that's outside that ribbon crimp end. And we want the entire tassel to fit inside the crimp end. So I'm gonna go in a couple of millimeters, pull my thread down here a little bit. I'm just gonna tape it to the card so it's nice and secure. Then, I'm going to start wrapping around the card a couple millimeters in from that mark. Wrapping down and then I'm coming back and the way to get these really nice and even is to come outward in like a triangle like this and then run the thread against the original wrap. And I'm gonna just keep doing that over and over until I get to the other side.
And once you get the hang of it, you can go a little faster. Oh, someone's asking where you get these Fire Mountain Gem cards. Um, you know, this is something that we have given away. We, we tend to like to give little free gifts with our orders. And we will be giving some away with orders coming up this season. Um, I don't know how long that's going on or can't guarantee that it will come with every order. But it is something coming with, with uh, free orders. We're also going to have these pretty soon. I don't think they're quite available yet, but coming up before Christmas time, we're going to have these available in lots of 10 for people that like to give them away. So we will be selling them as well. Okay, we're just keeping wrapping and bringing it out and butting those threads right up against each other. Okay, and it takes a little time to have just a little bit of patience with it. But as you get better, you can go a little faster. And we're just going to speed up just a little bit. It's okay if the card bows just a little bit. I find that that happens from the pressure of the thread. That's really okay. Okay, it looks like I'm about done here. That's about as wide as I want it. It's inside both of those marks that I made with the Sharpie. So now that that first row is finished, I'm going to grab a piece of scotch tape and I'm just going to tape down the tail of the thread so it all stays how I have it on the card. And then I'm probably going to take my fingernails and just, just scooch them in and make sure that it's a nice tight kind of warp. Now that that's done, I'm going to go right back over my last wrap. So I'm going to take my thread and go right over the last thread. And I'm, oh, you know what? I almost forgot. And this is an important step. It's so easy to do that. I'm going to take my E6000 Freylock. This is really great to use with any kind of thread or fabric. Um, it's flexible. It also will not permanently stick to my plastic card. It'll come right off. But it will stay on the, on the thread fabric. Um, I'm going to take a bead of this E6000. And I'm going to go right along the top of the card between those marks, making sure that I encompass the ends of the thread, just like that. And then you can kind of work it in a little bit, but it's okay if there's extra up there. You're never going to see it. But what you're doing is bonding those threads together to make the top of the tassel that's going to go inside your ribbon crimp end. Um, so be generous with it, you know, make sure that you have enough and just make sure that those end threads are really well coated. Okay, now I can start my, <laughs> my backwards um, wrapping. All right. Oh, thank you so much for sharing the video. We really appreciate that. Okay, so I'm going to go back over my last wrap directly over the top of it. And then I'm doing the opposite thing. So I'm coming at a triangle and hitting the last thread that I just wrapped. So it's kind of like the same motion. I'm going to go all the way back to the other side. And these two rows of thread like this wrapping around um, makes a really nice thick full tassel. I probably wouldn't do it much thicker with these ribbon crimp ends because you really want to be able to fit um, the top of this into the ribbon crimp end. This is just about the right thickness. Move my tassel out of the way there. Okay. I'm going to find my last one there. Okay. And this, on this one, I'm just a little slower. I take a little more time because there's already a layer of black thread there. And I just want to make sure they all get in the right spots right up against each other. I'm 
I'm about halfway to the other side there, a little more maybe. You know, another thing that you could do with this if you wanted a really kind of neat look, and this is something I was thinking about the other day, I wish I would have tried, and I'll probably go back and try it, but your first layer across, the first time you do your wraps, you could use a different color. And so you could end up with a tassel with the outside one color and the inside another color. I would have loved to have red in the middle of this. So there's just an idea for another... Um, another way to do these with a little flare. Okay, we're almost there. Just another wrap or two. One more wrap. Okay. So I've got both sides wrapped, or both layers wrapped. I'm gonna take another piece of scotch tape just a little one, and I'm going to tape the tail down so it all stays right where I want it. And I'm going to take my Freylock, and I'm going to put another bead of Freylock over the top of the original one. And you're always working from the same end. You've got one loose end down here with no glue at all, and you've got all of the glue up at the end between the marks. I'm going to put a pretty generous bead, make sure it really works into the thread and really encompassing those end threads. That's really important. Um, and once I have it how I want it, and it's okay, it doesn't need to look perfect, that's all going to be inside the crimp end. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cut that off. We're finished wrapping. And I'm just going to set it aside somewhere like that where the glue isn't going to be touching anything and just let it dry for like eight hours. That's kind of what Freelock says. They want about eight hour drying time for this to be really workable. But since we're in a video and we don't have eight hours to wait, I actually have one already made up. So I'm going to put this wet one aside and we'll work with one that's already dry. And you can see the Freelock dried really well. It dries clear and it really encompassed all those threads. The next thing I'm going to do is remove the scotch tape that's not needed anymore. Hi, Jennifer from Oregon. Oh, I'm so glad to bring you the videos. It's really fun. She says, what a lovely, elegant earring. Uh, using a card to create the tassels is a great idea. Yeah, you know, um, I didn't know how to do this at first. You know, my, um, someone in my department came to me with this idea and said they wanted me to do these earrings. And I was like, oh, how do we do flat tassels? You know, I never made one before. And uh, I started kind of thinking. And then the three jewelry designers here, myself and Rose and Laura Lynn, got together and talked about it. And this is the solution that we came up with. You know, we each put in some input. And so, um, I don't know if other people are using this technique. It's just something we kind of came up with, but it's definitely worthy of sharing because it's just a great, um, easy tool. You can just use something out of your wallet. I love that. I love found tools. Um, is the thread you're using the same type of thread used in the last pair? Oh, okay, let's look at that. So the original hoop tassels here, these are pre-manufactured tassels. I didn't make these. They come already like this. In, you can find them on um, from Fire Mountain. We sell them. They're a cotton. They're a type of cotton. And the black thread, you can see the sheen on it. It has more sheen. Like These are really kind of a flat color, I mean, flat finish. And um, you can see the silk thread that we're using here. These black ones have a really nice sheen on it. It gives it like a little more flavor of elegance. Okay, so let's take off the scotch tape. And if I can't get it with my fingernails, I can come in with a pair of pliers and just lift it up. I use pliers for a lot of things. I'm just gonna totally remove the scotch tape from the card. And there should be three pieces on here, so we just gotta find where they're Easy to lift up. There we go. 
go. And I mean, the big deal is getting all the scotch tape off of the thread or painter's tape if that's what you decided to use. You don't want that left on the thread. I think we've got it. We'll see as we go. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is pick up my card and put the opposite end from the glue face up here away from me. So my body is here. The glue is here right next to my body. And the free end of your tassel is out here away from you. And this is really important because we're going to use a craft knife to cut that off. So this is a craft knife. Um, make sure that you have a sharp blade. Sharp is always really important when you're dealing with thread and tassels. And with the loose end, make sure not to cut the glue end, with the loose end away from you, insert the craft knife under all the threads. Make sure you get under all of them, both layers. And away from your body, you're just going to cut that. And I'm actually going to hold my hand down the card here a little bit so I'm not in the trajectory of that knife because they are really sharp. And it can take a couple movements, but just cut all of the tassel away from the bottom of the card. Then whenever I put my craft knife down, I really like to put the cover on because they are so wickedly sharp. They're a great tool and I love that it's so sharp, but I definitely don't want to get that in my skin. Okay, so the next thing we'll do is just lift the glue end off of the card, just real gently. We want to keep that tassel intact. It looks like there's a piece of, oh, there we go. So you end up with this kind of curly Q tassel, and we've got some long tails here. That's okay, we're going to trim it anyway. But you end up with your tassel securely connected by this fray lock. And we'll, I'll show you how to straighten those out. Unless you really like that curly Q look, then you can leave it like that. I think it's kind of fun. Um, it just depends on your taste and how you want it to look. For this project, we straightened it out. Just cut off the tail there. It's all ready. The next thing we're going to do is I'm not going to straighten it yet. I want to put the piece together yet so the top has more stability with the crimp end. So I'm going to grab my ribbon crimp end. Got a little piece of tape on my hand. Um, couple. <laughs> Working with lots of sticky things today. Um, Jennifer asks, how do you make your tassels less staticky? Totally easy. Um, I'm not going to totally straighten it right now because I want to do that after it's more stable. But if your tassel is really staticky, I'm going to actually show you the one that's finished. See all that static? See how it's just kind of hanging out and that could be kind of catching your hair? The easiest way to get rid of static is to take the smallest amount of water doesn't take much and just run it over the tassel and it just completely takes away the static. Water is magic that way. So that's how you get your tassels to be less staticky. If you have a problem with them keeping getting staticky, there's a product, um, I think it's called Static Guard. There's different products that you can spray onto fabric um, just like your, you would your clothes and you could use it that way too if it's continuously staticky and, and giving you issues. Okay, so back to our piece. We've got our ribbon crimp end. The way that I'm going to open this up, because it doesn't, it doesn't quite fit in here like this. It's just a little too um, thick to fit in there the way that it's already opened. There's not much opening on these. I'm going to take a fine pair of round nose pliers to open this up. Oh, Kathy, thank you. I love this nail polish. The, the glitter makes me happy. <laughs> I like bling just a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to take my um, fine round nose pliers and in one end of this ribbon crimp end, which I'm going to kind of clamp between my thumb and forefinger, um, I'm going to insert the round nose pliers in and then I'm going to kind of twist them and that opens it up a bit. And you can't insert them all the way. It has to be kind of until the, you have to leave a little play there. So don't insert them until they're really tight, kind of two thirds of the way to that. And you're just going to keep doing that. 
um, until it opens a bit. And I'm going to turn it around and do it on the other side the same way. And the reason that I'm doing this and not just opening them with like flat nose pliers, it's really easy to mar the metal on the outside and I don't want to do that. This protects the metal from being marred. Okay, so I'm going to insert my round noses in there and just keep doing it until it opens up some more. Then I'll kind of take a look at it and see is it open enough and I'll kind of test the end of my tassel to see if it fits in there really well easily. Not quite yet, I want a little more space. So I'm just going to keep doing it. I'll insert it in there a little further and just opening it up from the inside. You have to really get a strong hold on these two. Okay, let me try the other side. Shannon runs a dryer sheet over her tassels to remove the static. Oh, that's a cool tip. Thank you, Shannon. I'm going to try that. I have some dryer sheets at home. I'm going to have to go home and <laughs> play with them now. That's a great idea. If anyone else has any cool tips or tricks, throw them out there. I'd like to hear them. Okay, a little bit more, a little bit more. Okay, I'm feeling like that's pretty open now. You want to take a look at that. You can see the original opening on these crimp ends is just a little bit smaller. So we did need it opened up a huge amount, just enough to really accommodate that fray lock at the top of the tassel. Okay, if you're having a problem getting it going in this direction, you can put your foot the end in and kind of slide the tassel on if you do it really gently. You don't want to grab um, the thread with the teeth of this ribbon crimp ends. These ribbon crimp ends have little itty bitty teeth on the inside to grab the fabric. So now we've got that crimp end threaded onto the tassel. And I just want to make sure that all the threads are in there. I'm going to go ahead and set that down in a minute and I'm going to show you how we're going to crimp that closed because it's kind of a special technique. So I'm going to use a flat nose plier like this one to close up this crimp end. But I don't want to mar up the metal on the crimp end. I want it to be pretty, right? I don't want scratches and metal on metal can, can make scratches. So I'm going to use a product called Tool Magic. And this is what it looks like. It's something you could also buy from Fire Mountain. And what this is, is a coating that will coat your pliers and make them so they're not going to mar your metal. It's a lovely product. Um, so I'm going to show you how to use the tool of magic. There's a specific way to do it and there's a trick and I'm all about tips and tricks. So first you're going to shake up your tool magic really well. You want to make sure that it's really well incorporated in there. And I'm going to let it sit just for a second. So it kind of settles in from the lid. It's kind of a gooey substance. I'm going to open it up and just carefully so I don't get it everywhere. Okay, and you can see how it's just liquidy in there. Then I'm going to take my flat nose plier, and you can do this with round nose pliers too, um, any pliers really. If you're worried about marring up your metal, this is an awesome product. So I'm going to dip it in there all the way up to the jaw. I'm not going to get where the, it's hinged. And then the trick here is to take it out super slow. Um, Take it out super slow. So the slower you go, the thinner the coat is, and the easier it will be to work. And so you have this beautifully dipped plier when you're done. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and set this aside and let it dry. You have to let it dry for a while before you can use it. And then you end up, let's see, with a really nice dipped surface like this. And I'm going to use this flat nose plier that's dipped and, and protected 
to close up my ribbon crimp end. So I'm just going to kind of hold the threads together a, a bit. I found out that if you crimp them like really close, if you hold them too close together like that, when you um, close it up, it's, it's not going to be the best shape. So I'm going to kind of clamp the threads in my hand like, like I would want them naturally to lay, like that. And just making sure that the end threads are nice and tucked in to the crimp end. And then just simply close it up. And you can just gently kind of squeeze it all the way across. And there you have your tassel. That's done. Um, if there is one kind of poking out the side, or see there's a little glue on the side, I can see. I could just going to grab my um, flush cutters, and I'm just going to cut that glue off so I can't see it. You could use a little toothpick to, to get at it too if you really needed to, but I feel like that's all it needed. Okay, so now we have this beautiful straight tassel here in our finished earring, and I want to figure out how am I going to straighten out this tassel really really easy we go back to the water so I'm going to pull the water into frame here just get yourself a little bit of water you can run it under the tap too but soaking it is easier so you're going to want to completely submerge this tassel and soak it for a minute so I'm just going to throw it in the water there and make sure the whole thing gets really nice and wet okay it's completely soaked through Then I'm just going to take my fingers and just straighten those threads the best I can because they're going to dry in whatever configuration you leave them in. And if, if you're having a problem getting them really straight, you can clamp the ribbon crimp end in your fingers and use some of your pliers to kind of straighten too. You could even use a wide tooth comb if you have a comb at home. So just get them nice and straight. Okay, I'm going to set that down, get a little extra water there, that's okay. Uh, then all we have to do now is attach the rest of the elements. So we've got this little open hoop, a couple of jump rings, and an ear wire. I'm going to get a couple of closed jump rings because I want you to show, I want to show you. Well, they're not soldered closed, but they're closed. Um, how I open those up. Let me set this aside. Okay, so I'm going to grab one of my jump rings with a flat nose plier. You could also use a chain nose plier or a bent chain nose. And I'm just kind of clamping half of that jump ring with the little opening right here at the end at the top. Then I'm going to grab another plier, flat nose, chain nose. And I'm just opening that up sideways, just like this. I'm torquing it open sideways. And then I'm going to thread on the crimp end and that open hoop. And it's not quite wide enough. I'm going to open it a little bit more. It has to be pretty wide for this loop. It's kind of thick. Put that on there. And then I'm going to backtrack. And the same way, same way I opened it, I'm going to close it. And I'm going to rock the ends of the jump ring together back and forth so I get a nice tight fit so that won't be coming off. Then I'm going to grab another jump ring and do the same thing. Clamp half of it, open half of it like this, torque it open. Make sure you open it enough to accommodate that hoop. Thread the hoop through and then thread on your ear wire. And then backtrack, sideways, close the loop, rock it back and forth. And you've got this gorgeous finished earring. And once it dries, you're going to hang this to dry. Um, a, a trick that if you're looking like around the house where I'm going to hang this, I like to get a water glass and just hang it over the side of a water glass, a tall water glass. And then 
you end up with these beautiful, elegant crimp end earrings. Um, all of these options, are there options for people that are allergic to latex? There might be latex in the tool magic. You know, I don't know that for sure, and I'm sure that our team standing by can tell you whether or not that's true. They'll look it up if they can find that information. Um, but if you don't want to use a tool magic, if, if you're allergic, or if you just don't have it, you can take some painter's tape and you can wrap um, the jaws of your pliers with some painter's tape. I've used electrical tape. In a pinch, I've used scotch tape that doesn't work as well. Painter's tape and electrical tape are kind of my favorite. Um, masking tape and wrap the jaws of your pliers and that will keep you also from marring the metal. That's kind of a quick and dirty way to do it if you don't have the tool magic. Um, Rochelle, thanks for the tool magic trick. She uses tool magic too, but the covering is always too thick. Yeah, I know, and, and that's one of the things when you're using any kind of tool dip. They sell like industrial tool dip for the, at the tool store like um, that you can put your larger pliers in. You know, this is more um, for a smaller tool like this but it's really, really important to pull it out slow. The, if you just dip it in and out, you're gonna get kind of a thick mess. It won't give you a nice flat surface to work with. Or, or the, it changes the shape of the surface, so pull it out slow, that's really important. Um, Nicole uses a mini hair iron to straighten her tassels. Oh, that's cool. What a neat tip, Nicole, I really appreciate that. Um, so now we have our two pairs of these really beautiful, trendy tassel earrings. I'm so glad that you are here with us for th with this video today. I hope that you learned something that you'll enjoy. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, make sure and take a moment before you go just to hit that thumbs up, like the video. Um, that lets the video circulate more and we really appreciate that interaction. Anytime you interact with us on social media, um, that really, it, it makes us feel good. It, it warms our heart to know that you like it. Um, but also, it helps other people get to see it. And, you know, we really want to get out there to as many people as we can. Thank you so much for being with, here with us today. Um, come and see us next time on Fire Mountain Live. Next week, Laura Lynn is going to be here with a pair of the cutest ghost earrings for Halloween. <laughs> um, oh, no. That was last week. You know what? If you didn't see the video for the ghost earrings, go back and look. We do record all these videos, so if you missed anything, you can go back um, in our feed and look for the video and watch the recording and um, you know pick up what you missed. Go look at the ghost earring video. It was so cute. Um, she'll actually be doing next week holiday earrings, several different pairs of really simple ones that you can make that'll dress up your holiday outfit or they're great for a little gift too. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.